what is the best cloud backup service? That is the question we are answering in today's video because well, one, most of my friends believe that Google Drive and OneDrive are a backup, which they're not. They literally state it in their terms and conditions. And two, because most online best cloud backup reviews that I've seen so far are only really interested in one thing. How much money can they make on affiliate links? Like last year's version, I'm going to sign up with an account for all of the top names, iDrive, Backblaze, Carbonite, and a new one for this year's video, Acronis. And for each of those, I'm going to cover price, user experience, backups, restoration, and of course, security. Then after shooting this video, I'm gonna try and hunt down some deals or discounts for all of those products. And if I do find any, then I'll link them down below this video. So with that said, let's start off with iDrive. iDrive is the one that tops many of the online reviews, but does it deserve to be? For pricing, iDrive is insanely cheap because yes, I did find a discount and it is damn impressive. $7.95 for your first year for five terabytes of storage. It's almost too good to be true. And then after the first year, you'll pay $79.50 for five terabytes or $99.50 for 10 terabytes. And those prices are for one user, but unlimited computers, which is actually very good compared to others who limit you to a single machine. You can use this on a Mac, PC, iOS, and Android, and it supports external drives, as well as backups for some of the most popular NAS devices. And if you have a ton of data to either back up or restore, then iDrive can ship a hard drive to you for, to back up to, and then and send it back to them. And you'll have to pay shipping fees outside of the US, but this does actually take care of the hardest part of those backup services. For the actual backups, it does have continuous protection, though you do have to enable this manually after installing the client. And it still only works with files of up to 500 meg in size with any of the larger files getting taken care of in its daily backup job that you'll also need to configure. And for those backed up files, iDrive will store up to 30 previous versions of those files rather than 30 days of history, which is a much better approach than Backblaze's approach. In terms of backup speeds, I'm actually glad to see that the issues that I had last year seem to have been resolved. I can now back up my files and iDrive will max out my upload bandwidth so I can basically upload to iDrive as fast as my connection will allow me. Now for restoration, those of you in the US will definitely get a better service. They have this overnight shipping option where they will ship a physical hard drive with your data. But for anyone outside of the US, you just have to wait for that drive to ship. Otherwise, if you just want to restore a file within iDrive itself, then it's a simple case of browsing for the files or the folders you want, choosing the location you wish to restore it to, and then you wait. And when I say wait, whilst the upload speeds were fast enough to max out my connection, the download speeds weren't. I definitely felt like it was throttled. I did hit around 600 megabits per second briefly before it then seemed to get capped at less than half of that. So if you plan on downloading gigs or, or maybe terabytes of data, you might want to be prepared to either wait or use their drive shipping service instead. Security for your online data is very, very important, of course, considering you may be backing up like almost everything on your Mac up to these services cat pictures included. So it's reassuring that iDrive does let you set your own encryption key for those backups. Though do beware that only you and only you will know those encryption keys. So if you lose it, then you will lose access to your data. So it will be a very, very wise decision to store these encryption keys in a good pass manager. But overall, the pricing is good. Like the client's nice. And unless you have very, very fast upload and download speeds like I do, then the backup and restoration speeds will likely not be a huge issue for you either. Does it deserve to be number one in all of these online reviews? I don't know. And speaking of number ones, over now to last year's winner, Backblaze. Backblaze costs just $7 per month for unlimited storage with no caps on file sizes, and it can also back up any attached external drives for that price. Though there is a caveat, which we'll get into in just a second. It also doesn't back up a NAS drive as that's a separate service they offer. But for the backups, you get 30 days of version history by default, but pay just $2 more per month, and you can extend that to a full year of version history. Something I would definitely pay for if you consider signing up. Now they also have a forever option where they charge you half a cent per gig per month for any file stored beyond that one year history if you need that too. Something to be aware of here though is that with 30 days of retention and particularly those with attached USB drives, there's an overly complex article to read which I'll link down below to explain what happens to your data if you don't use your machine for 30 days. And it is one reason why I definitely recommend paying the additional $2 per month to extend that to a year and possibly even the forever option too. Now essentially, if you plug in a USB drive once and back it up to Backblaze and then never plug it in again, then six months later you want to 
to say recover some files on it, the data will be gone because it's gone past 30 days and it's not seen the USB drive for six months. So just be aware of that. The second thing to be aware of is that by default, Backblaze excludes a lot of file types and system level files and folders from the backup. So whilst Backblaze can be a great solution for backing up files and folders with your data in them, just be careful to check the exclusions to be sure that you are actually backing up everything that you want to back up to. The client itself defaults to continuous backups, which is good. So it just backs up constantly as you make changes. And also I quite like that this client actually integrates with the system preferences panel rather than being a separate app. And it just fits in really nicely as a Mac application. And upload speeds for doing those initial backups, incredibly good. Now this impressed me last year and it still impresses me today. Full speed uploads that maxed out my internet connection at over 120 megabits per second until it was finished. Very, very good for those of you with fast connection and a lot of data. Though to get it to do this, you do need to go into the settings and set it to unlimited bandwidth and set the number of backup threads to the max number, even though it warns you that it's only really recommended for fast computers and very fast networks and still recommends no more than six threads. And my now, I guess, old, M1 Mac Mini barely goes above 10% CPU when backing up, so there's absolutely no issues here whatsoever. Now for restoration, same as iDrive, you can get Backblaze to ship you a drive, which you have to pay for, but then you'll be refunded if you ship the drive back to them in good time. I guess they're trying to stop people stealing the large drives because, you know, they'll be shipping them out, so that makes sense. Again, it's great for those in the US, but anybody outside will be subject to additional shipping charges. Unfortunately, the client itself doesn't let you restore files, which is a bit of a shame. You are forced to sign in using the web browser, and then anything more than a single file takes a while for Backblaze to zip it up, which then means for large restorations, you could be waiting a very long time whilst your backup is being prepared. But once you do get it, the download itself actually is really quick. It maxed out my download speeds. So I can't really complain there. I just wish you could directly store from the client, like with iDrive. For security, and again, like before, Backblaze lets you set your own encryption key, which means only you have access to your data. And again, if you lose the key, then you lose access to your data too. But it means it is so much more secure because Backblaze themselves can't access it. So overall, a pretty solid service, like unlimited storage at a good price with fast transfer speeds. So I think the only negative here is the confusing issues with providing 30 days of retention, particularly when backing up external drives. So if you do go with Backblaze, just be sure to check that box to extend that to a minimum of one year. A quick pit stop in now to Carbonite. <laughs> This is gonna be a very, very quick pit stop for Carbonite because whilst their website has had a facelift since we last looked, Carbonite still does not automatically back up any file above four gig in size, unless you upgrade to their crazy expensive Carbonite safe core service. I don't wanna be caught out because a file has crept over four gig in size. I didn't realize it. My computer's now blown up and now I've lost all my files because of a stupid backup service that didn't back up due to a technicality. So my advice, skip Carbonite and look at one of the other options here. And if you want the full review, it's basically the same as last year. So feel free to rewatch that last year's video, which I'll link up here somewhere. Anywho, next up is one that actually really, really did shock me when I reviewed it. I wasn't even planning on reviewing it in the first place, but damn was I wrong. But before that, you know when I mentioned about complicated things like storing your encryption password somewhere safe? Well, Synology has a totally free password service, which can help you with that. I know, right? Aren't Synology those people who just make NAS drives? Well, yes they are, but they also do this. Their C2 password service lets you automatically generate and securely store passwords across multiple devices. There is a free tier, which has basically all of the features that you actually need right out of the box. And there's also a family plan for a very low cost of $4.99 a year for up to six users. And all data is stored with end-to-end -end encryption, with zero knowledge, so only you have access to your data once again. Now there's no weird limitations on devices you can use it from, or the number of passwords you can store, like some other free password managers have. And it is genuinely a fantastic option if you are looking for a free or low cost password manager. So check the link in the description below for that and a huge thank you to Synology for sponsoring this portion of the video. And with that said, Acronis. Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office, whilst it is a mouthful of a name, also does a mouthful of things. From backing up online or locally with a full system image or individual files, to cloning your hard drive, to backing up your Microsoft 365 or Outlook.com and OneDrive accounts, though not your Google account, strangely. And it also comes with some more advanced cybersecurity protection with built-in antivirus and anti-malware protection. Whew. See? See what I mean? And because of this, Acronis is priced very differently to the other products we've tested here. So for $124.99 per year, you get one terabyte of cloud space and you can upgrade that up to five terabytes at a cost of 
$4.99 per year. But as I've just mentioned, and as you'll see below, that includes not just online backup, but a ton of other features as well. And if there's one thing that I would say around choosing you know, an online backup service, don't discount something based on price alone. Now I reached out to Acronis after shooting this video and more on that at the end of this video, but they've also offered a 20% discount when using the promo code pmatheson2022. So I'll leave a link down below for that one as well. But as far as the overall user experience goes, I've got to give it to them. I actually really like the Acronis client. Yes, there is an awful lot to it because of those extra features, but it looks good. It's not overly confusing, it works. And so far, other than the physical limitations in terms of the size of data you're backing up, I'm yet to see any other limitations. All of those additional features I mentioned can be enabled or disabled on a fairly granular level, and I like that. Perhaps because it's maybe targeted at a more tech-savvy person to begin with, but I just I just really like this approach. Now, Cronus also offers a data shipping service similar to the others, but you provide the drive and ship it to them, and then they return the drive to you once you're done. So this does mean that you'll need to then pay for that drive first. It is a shame that it's not included as part of the price, but I can understand why. For backups, Acronis actually has one of the best overall experiences for me. It maxed out my upload bandwidth to the Acronis cloud servers, has a really simple and easy experience to configure those initial backup jobs, and with tons of flexibility over what you back up. From local to local, local to cloud, backing up your 365, there is just a ton of flexibility here. Now, the only thing that I did notice is that the upload speed reported by the Acronis client seemed to be underquoting the speed that my Mac was actually uploading at, which is only really a cosmetic issue. You also have the ability to configure email notifications, which I absolutely love. And the good news continues with restorations. It's a really simple process and it's fast and basically maxes out the download speed of my gigabit connection if given a chance. Now, in fact, attention to detail here. If you try and restore a file that's already there, the program will instantly realize this and not re-download everything from the cloud again. It's a really minor thing that probably no one else would really be stupid enough to try and do, but it just shows that they've gone that step further in making what seems like a really good restoration experience. And it doesn't stop there either, because with Acronis, you also have a ton of options in terms of restoration, to the point where you can even do what's called a bare metal recovery, which if your Mac is totally crashed and you've lost you know, everything, including the operating system, you can restore the whole thing, assuming you, of course, have configured a backup job in the first place to capture the whole system image. And these features are why it's not just a seven bucks per year or 10 bucks per month service, because you do seem to get so much more. Acronis has it nailed when it comes to security too. Zero knowledge encryption, like yes, but with all the additional features it has, such as the malware protection, it even offers electronic signatures as an add-on feature, but they've got this down to a granular level, which you can even choose which Wi-Fi networks you want to use when backing up. So if you had a laptop, you could tell it to only use your home network to back up and then never worry again about using public Wi-Fi, only to discover then your online backup program is swallowing up all your bandwidth. And similarly with intelligent battery monitoring, so it doesn't back up whilst you're on low battery. It's simple things like this that makes me think that Acronis has actually thought long and hard about how a backup product should work from a user's perspective. And to add to my overall good impression of Acronis, they've been in the backup business for a very long time. For years and years, I've been using Acronis products as an IT engineer. So it's another check in the box for me that actually, of all the backup providers, perhaps Acronis is the one to rely on here. If you have watched all of this video and you're still confused over which one you should be using to back up, then I'll give you my take on what you should do. If you don't have much money to spend, then iDrive wins hands down, at least for the first year. If you have terabytes of data, then Backblaze, as long as you upgrade to the extra year or more of retention. But actually, if we ignore the price, then I'm genuinely impressed with Acronis. It's got possibly the best product and service here of all the backup services. And so much so that I'm actually gonna follow this video up with a full review of Acronis. So subscribe for that when it's ready. And in the meantime, now you've got your backup system sorted. Next, go and find the best cloud service to store all of your photos from your mobile phone in this video and I'll see you in there. Cheers.